Rangers lineup, which looks immensely powerful despite the fact that there's no Sunas, Durant, Davy Cooper, or McCoy. And they have Derek Ferguson and Andy Gray on the bench. And every player in that lineup cost a six or seven figure transfer fee, with just one notable exception. That's 20 year old Union National Scott Nisbet, who's throwing Ali McCoy's number nine jersey. And he's the longest serving player in that starting lineup, having joined the club in 1985. And Motherwell are without their first choice centre backs, Craig Patterson and Chris McCart, who are both injured. But there's lots of experience in that lineup, which appears designed for safety first tactics with only Paul Kinnaird, a recognised striker. Tom McAdam is back at centre half, and he's joined in central defence by 25 year old Alec Kennedy, who is playing his first, first team match in 1988. Well, a huge crowd as Motherwell, still without a Premier League win, start the match against the league leaders. So looking very much a home banker for any one doing the coupon. And it's Rangers who try to get forward straight away, but Alec Kennedy having to settle very quickly in perhaps the toughest task in the Premier Division at the moment, playing against Rangers at Ibrox. And there's the first corner kick of the match to Rangers. Conditions absolutely ideal. Terry Butcher strides forward to join the attack. Richard Goff is also there, so is John Brown. There's Brown. And the corner will be taken by Mark Walters. Oh. Got away well by Kennedy. Here's Neil Cooper. Walters again. Cooper towards the far side looking for Drinkle. Barningham losing control, back with Wilkins. Kirk back marking Nisbet. Here's Steve Kirk from Motherwell. And now Farningham. Well judged by Kinnaird, sidestepping Gary Stevens, but then being robbed unfairly by Ian Ferguson. That's a free kick to Motherwell. And a chance for them to break out of their own half for the first time in the match. Well, Motherwell have forced themselves off the bottom of the table by means of a string of draws, but anxiously looking for that first victory. Chris Woods calling to Neil Cooper to leave that. Brown to Goff. And now Stevens. Wilkins calls for the ball in the middle. Cooper again using Goff. Wilkins very much the focal point of the Rangers build-up from midfield. And this bit has gone to the right. Followed across by Philibin from Motherwell. Richard's hurried clearance goes straight to John Brown. Superb cross, there's Trinkle! Splendid play from Rangers. Kevin Trinkle getting up so well again. But just look at the quality of this ball from John Brown. That talented left foot, the swerving cross, Drinkle's positioning was excellent, a powerful header, and Cammy Duncan knew it was going wide. With just header, there's McAdam and Kirk. They'll have been looking for Kinnear, but Goff read that. Wilkins now, a stumble from Brinkle, allowing Philibin to collect for Motherwell. This is Boyd. Linking well with Kinnaird. High ball for Farningham. Good effort that from Farningham. Does it well in a drop with John Brown closing in. Good build up from Motherwell on the left, involving Boyd and Kinnaird. Long ball beyond John Brown for the first time volley from Farningham. Well taken by Woods. Brown plays it against Ray Farningham. Precious few gaps up front for Rangers to exploit. The Motherwell marking is very tight indeed. Always difficult to break down the men from Fur Park. That's how Rangers are finding it right now. Here's Nisbet. Fine turn that by Nisbet. Alec Kennedy caught completely and bringing down the Rangers striker. 
This is fine play from this, but the pass came from Brown. The dummy from this bit, the quick turn, and Kennedy was completely deceived. Well, the referee Mike McGinley considers that was serious enough to merit a serious lecture for Alec Kennedy, who appeared simply to be beaten all ends up by that move from this bit, rather than displaying any malice. Free kick to Rangers. This bit has recovered. Set piece. to come forward they have to find the net if they are to take anything from the match there's Russell won by Goff here's Wishart setting himself up for a shot at goal it's wide for Farningham back now with Kinnaird getting away from Walters and from Ferguson angling it in Butcher's clearance well taken by Nisbet Trinkle on his own in attack for Rangers. Running at McAdam. Trinkle against McAdam. And a free kick appears to be given, yes. Oh, Trinkle appeared to overcarry the ball as he attacked on McAdam. McAdam penalised for impeding the Rangers striker. It really is a marvellous opportunity for Rangers from the edge of the box. Trinkle, I think they feel he could have done better on that one-on-one -on -one situation. Took up great position once again, though, that Trinkle, he's very adept at that. With 25 minutes on the clock as Cammy Duncan prepares to face this free kick. It may well be Walters, it could be Wilkins or Brown. There's Walters. Turned away by Duncan, that was a splendid save by the young fellow of Cuba. Walters doing that beyond the wall and low. Duncan going across to his right and finger tipping the ball away. That was intended for Gary Stevens who made a run on the right to throw to Rangers. Bullivan tangling there with Walters. Still Rangers have possession. They've had so much of it in this first half. There's Butcher towards Drinkle, Kennedy's clearance, good play from Ferguson, beaten away by Duncan, good goalkeeping, well some explosive play again from Ian Ferguson, it was Drinkle who headed the ball high, then it was Kennedy, now look at this play from Ferguson, chesting it down, the change of pace away from Boyd, the driven ball inside, and Duncan did well. John Gagan, Kinnaird and Boyd, Russell back with Philippin. Here's Russell, linking with Kirk, good play from Motherwell, there's Russell! scores a brilliant goal here for Motherwell. There was Kinnear, there was Russell now striding at the range of defence. The return pass came from Kirk. The rifle shot low into the corner. Bobby Russell's first goal of the season, and you can be sure he enjoyed that to the full. Back in his former territory, Ibrox, bringing Motherwell back on level terms. And Walters. 
tackle was by McAdam. So it's the final minute now, the first half, which has undoubtedly had a shock ending. Rangers trying very hard to score before the interval and perhaps facing the wrath of Graham Sinnes, having dominated the first half. But it looks as though they're going to go in at half-time all square despite the early breakthrough. There was Walters trying to get forward, but it's a goal kick to Motherwell. Men deserve enormous credit. They really have been well organized at the back. They've been diligent, conscientious in midfield. And they've got the reward just about half time there. The end of the whistle. The first goal was scored by John Brown, his first of the season. Came in 18 minutes. The free kick by Mark Walters. A powerful, glancing header by Brown. Duncan was beaten. It looked as though Rangers then had things all their own way, they dominated the proceedings, but then, two minutes from half-time, Bobby Russell got his first goal of the season, brilliantly contrived, the 1-2 with Steve Kirk, a deadly finish, so the surprise half-time scoreline is Rangers 1, Motherwell 1. A warm welcome for the Motherwell players as they emerge, and the Motherwell chicken behind the Rangers goal, particularly pleased by that first half performance. So a great build-up of noise for the start of the second half. The game taking a dramatic turn just before the interval with that equaliser from Motherwell, who appeared to be defending stoutly but causing no real threat for the Rangers' defence. And suddenly Rangers had to try to win the game all over again. There's Prinkle. Such a strong and lively attacker, Kevin Prinkle. Just look at the way he causes problems from this position. Looks quite unlikely. Turning, forcing his way forward, getting the shot in, pulling it wide of the target. Walters again, seeing plenty of the ball at the start of the second half. Right, swinging cross, Brown was there, there's Boyd in the clearance. Although well, can't get the ball out of this danger area. There's Ferguson. Now Goff. That's for Stevens, who's onside. Nisbet's header, picked away by McCarran. There's Wilkins. That took a deflection off Alex Kennedy. It's a corner kick to the Rangers. Here's the goal. Hold it down by Cup. Oh, Gagan, very composed inside his own box. Wilkins only goes as far as Wilkins. Keeping by Duncan. And the problem is not yet over for the Motherwell defence. Tremendous onslaught this from Rangers. Here's Mark Walters. Behind here by Kirk. Then by Russell. Here's Farningham. Wishart. This is now with Philippin. Oh, we we'll want to enjoy some possession now, but that's given straight to Goff. But it turns it to Boyd. Stevens. Runs being made by Nisbet. That's Tom McAdam, and that's back with Cammy Duncan. Duncan, clearly the hero of the moment, with that incredible save. The pressure mounting. It was played in there by Wilkins. What a great flashing header this was from Ian Ferguson. Duncan at full stretch with a one-handed save. Header helped on by Nisbet. Kennedy's given it straight back to Nisbet as if Winkle Cooper's in position. Fine chance for Neil Cooper. He's already scored once for Rangers at Petodre. Set up by Drinkle, leaning back when he let fly with that shot over the top. Now, a substitution being made by Rangers. Off goes the half working Scott Nisbet, who's got a good match. It's a warm welcome for the replacement. Very much a favourite here, Ibrox. It's Andy Gray. Now Brown. Ian 
Berg is operating near to the middle of the field now in the second half. The pass misses out Goff. Rangers exposed a little with Goff out of position. Here's Paul Kinnear running at Butcher. Good effort that from Kinnear. The listing was all important for Woods. That should have been it looked so easy. The Brian forcing one. Kinnear runs so well with the ball at his feet. Looks very comfortable indeed. Checked inside for the right foot shot and Woods on the six yard line. Here's Ian Ferguson. Using Brown as a decoy, that's towards Andy Gray. Here's Drinkle. And a fine save from Duncan. Well, what good attacking play this was. Ian Ferguson with a flighted chip towards Andy Gray. The control of the chest from Drinkle. The first time volley and Duncan down to his right. Two first header, there's Ian Ferguson very quick to the ball. Standing away from Cup. Delicate ball towards Gray. Good defending again by Alex Kennedy. Gray applauds the pass from Ian Ferguson. No exception now. Paul Kinnear being asked to just go to the edge of the box to look for any hovering player there. There's Walter to the corner this time. Played in by Cooper. Turned by Grinkle. No luck again for Kevin Grinkle. It was very sharp indeed, the Walters corner kick, played in first time by Cooper. Look at the way it was controlled, the turn by Drinkle, the shot going wide. It's Goff coming forward to join the midfield. Brown again, Walters has gone very deep this time, followed again by Wishart. That's towards Andy Gray. He got free of his marker again. His positioning really is immaculate inside the opposing box. Finding space where there appears to be none. And trying to float that towards the far corner. A little bit of roving, but losing it to Cooper. Goff now to Walters. Can this follow defence survive? The pressure is relentless. Here's Walters. Neil Cooper. And swept off the line by Russell. Cross came from Walters. Neil Cooper with the header, appeals for handball against Bobby Russell, particularly by Andy Gray, but it appeared to strike his left thigh. What a thing it is. There's Goff. Not far away, a flashing header from long range. Still, it will not run kindly for Rangers. And now there will be a substitution made by Motherwell. John Gavin is going on. is being replaced by Derek Ferguson. Off goes Cooper. The more creative skills of Derek Ferguson being prepared, being prepared for this late push. The warm welcome for Ferguson. His ability to play incisive passes may be crucial in these closing stages. Golf's header. Up goes Andy Gray. Drinkle now trying to go beyond Kennedy. And a fine effort by Drinkle. Oh, what a good striker he is. This was well taken by Drinkle. High ball forward, Andy Gray causing problems. There was Drinkle, nodding into space. Powerful shot, Duncan well positioned. And less than ten minutes remaining, Rangers battle on. The time of the match where stamina will be pushed on. Oh, really must be feeling the pace now. They've been under the collar for so long to show their strength and fitness that didn't hang on for that. There's Brown back with Wilkins. Andy Gray going up with Goff. Hooked away by Kennedy, but there was pushing going on. Goff and Gray pushing in the box. Well, the two dangerous men in the air. Gray, I think, was the real culprit. He was holding down a defender. Alec Kennedy made a great clearance, nevertheless. change being made is the departure of Bobby Russell, perhaps now feeling the pace in the late stages. He's had a fine match for Motherwell, the scorer of that superb equalising goal before the interval. Off he goes to be replaced by the powerful figure of Steve Cowan. The 
signals coming from the Motherwell dugout to retain a line of five in midfield, leaving Kinnaird all on his own up front. There's Andy Gray in behind Wishart, looking for Walters. Down it goes towards Ferguson. And Tammy Duncan will not be denied. Excellent inspired goalkeeping once again. Gray with a good header back inside. There was Walters. Now Derek Ferguson making room for the shot and Duncan doing well once more for Motherwell. It's back with Wilkins. Andy Gray. Trinkle playing it in. It's complete again by McAdam. Here's Kinnaird all on his own with Butcher. He'll take this for a walk, you can be sure. Now Motherwell getting close forward in support. One of them is Steve Kirk. Another is Ray Farmingham. And Derek Ferguson cuts it off. He's forced to thump it clear as he dribbled it round Chris Woods. Well, the credit there must go to Paul Kinnaird, playing it inside to Farningham. That was intended for Kirk. Ferguson was there taking it away from Woods and thumping the ball to safety. The 90 minutes are over. There's been a little bit of time for injury, so the referee's adding that on. Perhaps some time wasting too. Here's Mark Walters. Can Rangers do it at the last touch? Here's John Brown. Helped on by Ferguson. There's three times. And did you, did you ever think that winning goal was coming? I think you always think uh, you're going to get it. I think with the amount of pressure that we had them under in the second half, it was just a matter of keeping our heads and, and being patient. I know the fans were, were probably a bit frustrated, um, but the game does last 90 minutes, sometimes a little bit more than 90 minutes, as it did today, Jock, with a bit of injury time. And you've just got to keep pegging away in games like this, and, and we've got the reward for our persistence and uh, and keeping calm and, and keep putting more passes together. We never just continue to lump it straight in there. We, we, we tried to play a bit of football, even late on in the game, and it worked with Derek Ferguson playing a little bit of football in the midfield and sending jo John Brown away down the wing. But from the striking point of view, does that kind of relentless onslaught make life more difficult for you? It does. There, there's always a lot more bodies in the box, Jock. It's never easy to score goals these days. People make it very difficult. And I think when Motherwell, a team like Mother will come and put up with shutters like that. It's very hard to find any sort of space uh, in the penalty area. Um, but fortunately, Kevin Drinkin, Drinkle found six inches or two to nod that one, and it was great to see it going in. I mean, I, it went over my head, and I thought it was just going to go out for a, throw, for a goal kick, and I'd looked round, and there was Kevin coming steaming in, so it was great to see. How do you think they'll cope on something on Wednesday night? I think we'll cope well. I mean, people are saying, and a lot of people are saying that the game's over, 2-0 was, was too much, but I, I don't see it that way. I know the players don't. I know the lads are confident. Um, they feel the scoreline flattered Cologne a great deal over there. The lads felt they dealt with them quite comfortably for 75 minutes and, and probably got too confident in the last 15 and pushed men forward when we probably could have accepted a 0-0 or a 1-0. 
Uh, and the lads feel confident. I mean, you look around this place, and if we get an early goal on Wednesday, Jock, with 40-odd thousand here screaming down the German's neck, I don't think they'll fancy it. I can remember when, it, when Everton played a, a German side, Bayern Munich, in the semi-final, and we went one down at Goodison. But in front of 50,000, as soon as we got back in the game, they just folded completely. And I can see that sort of thing 